Good morning everyone. This video is compliance for our midterm performance and therefore created for educational requirements. So let's start. First thing to consider before we tackle these two intellectuals is they are committed to science. Their ideas might be influenced by the event called the scientific revolution. We are going to view in their period the early form of American pragmatism, pragmaticism as well as the scientific method and its relation to philosophy truth and reality. We are also heading towards John Dewey's inquiry knowledge, instrumentalism, his ideas that are beyond empiricism and rationalism, and how he deal with truth, and most importantly, how he view knowledge. Our first philosopher is Charles Sanders Peirce. He is the founder of American pragmatism. Pragmatism means action gets priority over thought, meaning dealing with things sensibly and realistically and in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations. Halimbawa, mga brad, mas pinili mo, hugasan na lang ang madumi mong mga labahin kaysa mag-isip ng mga posibilidad na buhay sa ibang planeta. Ang mga topic ni Charles, mga brad, ay logic, language, communication, and semiotic. At kung hindi ka pamilyar, Semiotic means the study of symbols and signs and how they are used. And he is also known for his psycho physically monistic metaphysical system. What? But in order for us to understand the term, we should first dive to his main idea. A brief biography. Pinanganak siya noong September 10, 1839 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Namatay noong April 19, 1914 in Milford. Pennsylvania, umabot sa 12,000 printed pages and 80,000 handwritten pages ang kanyang mga napublish na akda. Ang mga topics ay mathematics, physical sciences, economics, psychology, and other social sciences. And this philosopher really cares a lot in terms of wide variety of subjects. By the way, let's explore his philosophy. Pragmatism, Pragmaticism, and the Scientific Method these are Peirce's best-known works. The first one named The Fixation of Belief. Peirce, in this account, defended the superiority of scientific method, while the other one, entitled How to Make Ideas Clear, is a pragmatic end towards clear concepts. For us to understand Peirce's philosophy a way more better, we should consider that he worked as a physical scientist, and other famous physical scientists are Einstein and Stephen Hawking. He worked as a physical scientist for 32 years in his job with the United States Coast and Theotetic Survey. As Pierce understood philosophy to be the philosophy of science, and he understood logic to be the logic of science. Look how scientific this man was. He treated philosophy and logic as science, not will really in empirical manner, but that's how he viewed these things. He viewed this great field as both sciences. This is also the reason why he named his view as pragmaticism rather than traditionally calling it pragmatism since the limited frame of pragmatism prioritized the actualization of something. But for peers, science in the context of this view can appear in whatever way, whether in conceptualization or on its practical use. The whole meaning of a clear ideas or concept, considering its practical bearings, or shall we say, important connections, in order for us to attain its most meaningful form, it must have some sort of experiential condition. In order for us to understand the typhoon Ulysses, before the landfall and the aftermath effect, practical bearings include how Pagasa, or technology produce a model of it, such as imaging or how strong it will be, and of course the empirical condition which means the available facts after we experience it. That's how operationalism and verificationism works. And Pierce also believe in the reality of abstractions. That's why some of his accounts were mathematical statements. For him, physical concept is determined by an exact method of measuring it. For you to reach the moon, you need mathematics and abstractions. For you to reach the Jupiter, you need a mathematical prediction. 
considering the other empirical connections. For Pierce, this is what a clear concept means. Another thought. Science can deal only with phenomena. This is according to Pierce, that all scientific concepts must somehow be traceable back to phenomenological roots. So for Pierce, what is outside of the logical possibility has nothing to do with science. That's clear for him. As for the sense, he appeared to be a realist, and he himself labeled as a realist, a realist of Kantian empirical. And since it is connected to phenomenological root, it must be therefore a kind of internal realism. So claro sa atin mga brad, na in medieval sense, he is really an anti-nominalist. But another profound idea of him is his Hegelianism, means it is connected to what we call evolutionism, as what Bro Aaron reported, it is in the constant process of change. There are four major components of his Hegelian idealism. Firstly, for appears, the world of appearance, which he calls the Paneron, is a world consisting entirely of signs. Ano ba yung mga signs na to? These are the quality, relations, features, items, events, or everything that have meaning and appearances. Second point, a sign is one term in a tree sum of term that are indissolubly connected with each other by a crucial triadic relation that Pierce calls the sign relation. The sign or the representament means something or the one will represent something. So for us to understand the sign relation more better, we must understand the other two terms which are object and the interpretant. The object is what would ordinarily would be said to be the thing. The one who signifies what the sign is a sign of. So the word sign represents something. That's why we can understand it. The word dog, the word human, or even your name, birthdays, are be considered to be an object. The interpretant of a sign is said by Pierce to be that to which the sign represents the object. Hindi ito masyadong nalinaw ni Pierce sa kanyang mga akda. Pero malinaw na it is somewhat like a quality of mind, an activity of mind. Third point, mga brad. The interpretant of a sign, by virtue of the very definition Pierce gives of the sign relation, must itself be a sign. And a sign... Moreover, of the very same object that is or was represented by the original sign. The interpretant is a second signifier of the object, and it can be third, it can be fourth, it can be fifth, and so on and so forth. There's an infinite sequence of sign of the same object, a continuous flow of mental interpretants of an object. Fourth and final point, Pierce makes everything in the Paneron evolutionary. The whole system evolves. It was in his period when the evolutionism, already proposed by Hegel and philosophy, the evolution of ideas, and in biology by Charles Darwin, the evolution of biological species and varieties. It was the atmosphere of intellectual development during that time, and Pierce was aware of that, and for him, the entire universe and everything in it is an evolutionary product, and even what we call natural law, or the law of nature, evolve from one another. It is continuously evolving. Now since peers believe in the infinite sequence of sign and interpretant, following how he absorbed evolutionism, peers cannot be any type of epistemological foundationalist or believer in absolute or apodictic knowledge. He doesn't believe in foundationalism nor in absolute certainty of necessary truth. This is because for him, philosophy must begin wherever it happens to be at the moment, he thought, and not at some supposed ideal foundation, especially not in some world of private references. That's a very clear and concise idea of him. And what's really important for him is the scientific method, 
And yes, he's aware of the condition where a scientific researcher may begin in different way. But as long as they aren't working outside the scientific method, their results will fall towards the same outcome. This is a pragmatic conception since available data is what's really important here. That same outcome that he pointed out is what Pierce means by the truth. Very strong. To know the truth, use the way of scientific method, whether it is for empirical result or necessary truth. But does it mean after applying the scientific method and we arrive to a particular scientific achievement, a limit, and we feel it should be the latest version of it and the last version because we cannot think of more answer. This is the reply of Pierce for this. Although the scientific method will eventually converge to something as a limit, nevertheless at any temporal point in the process of scientific inquiry, we are only at a provisional state and cannot ascertain how far off we may be from the limit to which we are somehow converging. Yes, at ang para sa kanya, ang siyensya ay parating gumagalaw at hindi dapat mag-focus sa isang particular target at ang bawat empirical question na pwede nating propose ay pwedeng masagot at hindi dapat i-assume o isipin na imposible itong masagot. Kaya isa sa mga importanteng dictum niya is do not block the way of inquiry. Isa yan sa mga pinakasikat na sinabi niya. Do not block the way of inquiry. Furthermore, what does scientific method for peers mean? It is not necessarily different from the standard scientific method since it is also derived from him. It involves three phases. Number one is abduction, making conjectures or creating hypotheses. The next is deduction, inferring what should be the case if the hypotheses are the case. And induction, the testing of hypotheses. Napaka simple pero napaka importante niya until now. Just like the application of it in terms of finding the right vaccine to cure the COVID-19 patients. Ngayon, bago natin tapusin ang kanyang napakagandang pilosopiya, we must know that he believed that the great ocean of truth is infinite and always waiting to be discovered. And the right quote, It is not knowing, but the love of learning that characterizes the scientific man. Let's proceed to our next philosopher. His name was John Dewey, one of American pragmatism's early founders. The first two was William James and of course Charles Sanders Peirce. He's also considered to be the most important American intellectual for the first half of the 20th century because of his systematic views in ethics, epistemology, logic, metaphysics, aesthetics, and philosophy of religion. A brief biography. He was born on October 20, 1859 in Burlington, Vermont. He died on June 1, 1952 in New York City. He also participated in many non-academic activities such as educational protests. And his topics included psychology, metaphysics, knowledge, philosophy of education, ethics, political philosophy, aesthetic, and religion. Let's proceed to his approach towards inquiry and knowledge. Instrumentalism, but before anything else, Dewey's instrumentalism to understand in a more comprehensive manner. Since this philosopher covers a lot of area, his theory of inquiry or instrumentalism is really a reconstruction of epistemology so we can distinguish his other idea. A quick view, mga brad, sa kanyang instrumentalism, um, we must know na ito ay isang Darwinian point. Ngayon, ibig sabihin, ang pagbabago or transformation ay isang natural na kondisyon sa ating mundo. Pangalawa, para sa kanya, knowledge and logic are really necessary. 
for us to survive or keep being alive. Important ito sa buhay. Kaya nga may kasabihan tayong knowledge is power, right? Pangatlo, biological basis. Biological basis. Mas madaling makuha ang data sa area na to para sa kanya kaysa sa mga abstract like mathematics. Pangapat, madaling intindihin empirical reasoning but he also insists na sa tulong ng mga nabanggit mas nakagagawa tayo ng mas malinaw at buong pagbibigay rason sa mga bagay. Ganito ang sirko ng instrumentalism. Ganun ang ikot niya. From Darwinian starting point papunta sa constructive na pagtingin sa mga bagay sa pamamagitan ng paglarason. Ngayon, alam natin na sinunda ni Dewey si Pierce at alam mo na napaka-scientific ni Pierce at alam mo rin na kahit mismo ang logic ay tinitingnan ni Pierce bilang isang science, right? Ito naman ang view ni Dewey. Logic should not assume either thoughts or reality's existence in general but should dress content with the function or use of ideas and experience. I'll give you time to absorb. I'll give you time to digest that. Meaning, dahil napapaligiran si Dewey ng nakaraan ng mga transcendentalist logician, he believed na nagiging valid ang isang idea nakadikende sa gamit nito sa atin. Kaya nga, instrumentalism. Pagiging instrumento ng idea. Magmula sa pagiging formless sa ating isip, papunta sa totoong application. Magmula sa drawing ng isang arkitekto, papunta sa pag-actualize ng engineer sa project, or from dream to reality, pero ang instrumentalism ni Dewey abandons all psycho-physical dualisms and all correspondentist theories of winning. Hindi ibig sabihin na pagkatapos mo mag-transcend ng idea, ay titingnan natin na mas makatotohanan yung isa o mas makatotohanan ang existence nito kaysa sa naunang kondisyon. Because for him, The logical process includes those two as modes of existence. Equal sila pagdating sa pagiging instrumentalities dahil nag-work silang parehas. Cooperative in a way. Now, malinaw ang reply ni Dewey sa logical process. Tingnan naman, tingnan naman natin ang masasabi niya sa British Empiricism and Rationalism. Alam natin na uso yung away ng mga philosopher noong panahon ng medieval period na sinunda ni Dewey sa universals. Yun ang pinaka-problema nila. Yung connection ng internal realism sa external world. At kung meron bang independent or meron bang dependent process na nagaganap. Katulad na lamang ng pagtingin ni René Descartes na body is not really the main vehicle of knowing something but the mind. At iba naman yung kala Berkeley, iba naman yung sa mga nauna kay Berkeley, which is empiric- empirical accounts. Yung tabula rasa ni John Locke, yung nomina and phenomena ni Immanuel Kant, mga sinunda ni Dewey na philosopher, lahat sila nag-aaway-aaway pagdating sa dualism. Kung meron bang independent or dependent process na nagaganap sa loob at labas ng ating mga sarili. Lahat sila konektado sa iisang kondisyon. Paano ba natin malalaman ang tunay na pag-alam sa mga bagay? Ngayon, nag si Dewey sa gitna ng mga away ng mga to nag reply siya sa pamamagitan ng reflex art so, sa kanyang mga akda sa kanyang mga account at ni-reject pa mismo yung propagation ni Kant at alam natin na si Kant ay isa sa mga pinakamatalinong na buhay at anong sabi niya 
what measures knowledge value its correctness and truth is the degree of its availability for conducting to a successful issue the activities of living beings ngayon dissect natin unti unti yes sang ayon si Dewey sa ibang kritisismo ni Kant Yes, may meron silang pagkakahaling tulad. Lalo na yung kritisismo ni Kant sa rationalism and empiricism. Tulad na lamang ng pagtingin ni Kant na ang nature and intellect ay categorically independent. The nomina and phenomena. Pwede silang maging independent sa isa't isa. Pero para kay Dewey, hindi maaaring mapuntahan ni Kant philosophically ang kailangan para makuha ang buong punto ng isang nagbabagong proseso. Remember the Darwinian point. Because in his instrumentalism nagbabago ang perception, nagbabago ang pagrarason o mga teorya. Yun ay pabago-bago. Hindi mo siya pwedeng ma-reach philosophically in a concrete manner. Dahil kay Dewey, ang knowledge, kaalaman, ay isang dynamic instrument. Hindi to end. Knowledge is not an end. Hindi siya nag stay Hindi yan independent sa isang area. Nabinigyan rason naman ni Kant na independent ang nomina at pinomina. Pero pa kay Dewey, hindi. Ngayon, Tingnan naman natin yung view ni Dewey dahil malino na sa atin yung kritisismo ni Dewey kay Kant. Tingnan naman natin yung view ni Dewey sa inquiry, knowledge, and truth. Ito ang pinakadapat nating maintindihan. Kasi pag nalaman natin to, pag nalaman mo, kahit nakapikit ka, maintindihan mo si Dewey. Okay. Dahil nga sa kritisismo ni Dewey, dahil nga ang kanyang instrumentalism may cooperative walang independent na area sa isa't isa let me ask you a philosophical question thus reasoning and learning actually happen subukan mo sagutin ngayon hindi ko sigurado sagot mo Tingnan natin kung masasatisfied ka sa idea ni Dewey regarding sa the nature of logic. So, para kay Dewey, mas magandang tawagin ng logic bilang inquiry into inquiry. Yun ang gusto niyang term. Doon siya mas komportable. Dahil bago at sariwa noong panahon ni Dewey na isang systematic view yung idea na to, dahil nga itong to ay complicated in terms of collecting and organize, organizing the many forms or the many aspect of inquiry into inquiry. Sa madaling sabi, ang view na to at ang purpose nito is for the need for a recovery of philosophy. Very strong. The need for a recovery of philosophy. Very confident claim. Dahil hindi nga nagtagumpay ang philosophy at mga naunang philosopher na mas maintindihan kung ano ba ang knowing o ang pag-alam. Now, another thought. According to my source, throughout his career, parating describe o pinapaliwanag ni Dewey ang processes. Doon siya adik processes at mga patterns na lumilitaw sa isang problem solving. Bali kung nagsusolve ka ng problem, yung nangyayaring proseso at yung mga pattern na lumalabas habang nagsusolve ka ng problem. Yung proseso at connection na nagaganap habang nagsusolve tayo ng isang problema. Ngayon siya, ngayon, meron siyang mga paces 
at may title na Analysis of Reflective Thinking. Ito mga brad, itong mga paces na to, tulad ng nabanggit natin kung paano nyo kliniticize si Kant. These, these paces are both wall on the side of reason and emotion. Hindi lang isip ang kailangan dito. May lugar ang emosyon. May lugar yung dalawang kondisyon na yun. Unang pace, doubtfulness. A pervasive quality. Pervasive means existing in every part of something. Malabo. Pwedeng maraming puntahan. Katulad ng what is the meaning of life? Um, the complete mathematical e- equation of the universe, parang mga ganun. Itong pace na itong magsisilbing ilaw mo para sa susunod na pace, which is problem. Problem that is specifically formulated. Ano ba talagang gusto mong malamat? Ano ba talagang problema? Baka naman kasi mas magandang tanong ang what is the meaning of life according to Jesus? Or what is the complete equation of the universe according to Einstein? Pangatlo, Hypothesis The possible co- consequences Sa pace na to Dumadaloy ang halaga Ng isang facts And ideas Para ma-distinguish natin um, Kung possible ba Kung possible ba Ang isang solusyon Sa ginawa mong tanong At o kung meron ba na solusyon so, ginawa mong hypothesis next the basis of reasoning to ini-insist mo na yung possible contradictions nag-i-imagine ka na ng mga pinaka pwedeng contradiction sa naisip mong hypothesis so you can reform- reformulate your hypothesis pwede mo pang baguhin or even the problem itself Baka naman kailangan mong baguhin yung problema o hindi yung hypothesis. And finally, the test. Nakikita mo kung nasagot mo ba talaga yung tanong o kung na-convert mo ba from indeterminate to determinate. So, to be more clear, ganito tinitingnan ni Dewey ang knowledge. Knowledge as viewed by Dewey's transactional model of inquiry departs from tradition, tradition, traditional na pagtingin sa kaalaman. In effect, it is rough to earth. Knowledge as an abstract term. Mabigat. Revolutionary idea. So it means knowledge is really empty. Walang laman ng kaalaman. Ang sinasabi natin kaalaman ay walang halaga at walang laman. This is because for him, knowledge is just an abstract term. Produkto lang ito. And to understand na product, para maintindihan mong produkto, one must understand the process. This is what TV does. Parang karir o karera ng buhay. Hindi magkakaroon ng kwento ang karir mo kung hindi mo bibigyan proseso o wala itong proseso. Now, ang tingin ni Dewey sa katotohanan, sa truth, and remember this man is really a scientific guy. In scientific inquiry, the criterion of what is taken to be settled or to be knowledge is being so settled that is available as a resource in further in further sa mga susunod pa na inquiry not being settled in such a way as not to be subject to revision in further inquiry ang katotohanan para kay Dewey o ang truth mismo ay radically evaluated 
patuloy pa rin natin itong pinagninilay nila yan. Katulad na lamang ng law of thermodynamics. Matagal na itong tinuturing na totoo, but until now, inuobserbahan pa rin ang mga susunod na ebidensyang mas magpapatunay pa na totoo talaga itong teori na to. Ganoon nagbo-work ang isang scientific inquiry para mas malaman mo yung totoo sa totoo na meron pang totoo na pinakatotoo. You know, it's a process and patterns. Now, truth in final analysis is the statement of things as they are. Not as they are in the inane and desolate void of isolation from human concern, but as they are in a shared and progressive experience. Ngayon, parati nating tandaan na na ni Dewey ang knowledge bilang isang proseso at ang mga iniisip ng mga tao na katotohanan sa isang present era ay tumatagal lang at nagbo-work dahil sa social value o historic value pinapatagal ng mga tao dahil yun yung value na dapat pahalagahan nung panahon yun pero nagbabago yun and there I quote we do not learn from experience we learn from reflecting on experience yung totoo sa nararanasan natin ngayon o yung proseso o kaalamang nararanasan natin ngayon ay pwedeng maiba sa mga susunod pang connection sa mga susunod pang pattern and processes it's a process everything is a process everything is changing and that's okay for Jandiwi. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you, brother CJ. Thank you for listening.